after you've moved through the system, all these different problems occur, but finally it deposits a final set of data into a memory card. That card then has a number of chains of custody that anybody who's then carrying that card, where you're carrying a stack of paper ballots, sure, you could rewrite all the ballots, but that would take you a long time. If you're carrying a memory card with every single vote from that day from a machine, you can change it like that. Somebody could have in their car or anywhere else, they could have a very simple kind of reader. This has been demonstrated in a number of different hacks. You can just change the information on that card by overriding it with the same operating system type that was used to record it in the first place. What about Al-Qaeda or China? Or That's in the transmission component. Now let's say the cards have successfully gotten down to the county correctly. Who knows? No one's ever inspected the code inside this machine. So you're taking a card and you're saying, well, here's all the votes. And let's assume the correct card has been brought. Nobody's lost the card, which is what just happened in Maryland. They've actually gotten the card to the county. They put it in, and then it goes into a tabulator machine. Well, there's been repeated issues where people have said they've seen votes backing up in tabulators as cards are put in. Okay, well, that would indicate that something inside of that program is not adding cards forward. It may be adding cards backward. I don't know never seen the field sets. I do know in some of the optical scan machines and the cards where again I've gotten to look at the code, some of those cards are capable of taking a negative number. Now, as a programmer, this is a very interesting question. Generally, you try and make code as elegant, simple, and as clean as possible for security. There is no reason at all if you have zero votes and then you add votes from that point going forward, maybe 10,000 votes is the maximum you could ever have on a machine. That makes sense. So a card should have a range of 0 to 10,000. There is no reason in the world a negative number should ever be able to exist on a voting card. And yet, in all the voting card code that I've looked at, Diebold has a negative field that allows a negative number to be entered in a vote total. Why? Why, Why would you want to steal votes? That way you can start with a card that has negative 100 votes for somebody, then it takes them 100 votes before they even are back to zero. And yet Diebold does not allow, for proprietary reasons, anyone to review the vote tabulation software. They let, they let us work on their cash machines, but no, they won't let anybody see their software. Any thoughts as to why? Because they're stealing elections. How can you say that? I and mean, what are the vulnerabilities? Or is it you're just surmising? It? I'm not surmising it. I have a very strong understanding of statistical analysis. The way we actually find credit card fraud, here's a horrible fact that people are not going to want to know. About 2.5% of all transactions on the global credit card network happening right as we sit here, and there are billions a day, are fraudulent. 2.5%. That's a statistic that we are constantly battling with. When a fraud group, when a group that is doing some particular credit card scam moves into an area and begins working actively to fraud cards, we see those statistics rise above the background level and then we send in work, figure out who it is and try and break out the gang. Statistical analysis of the movement of one or two percentage points is how all computer hacking is detected. If you look at the case of Saxby Chambliss, that's ridiculous. The man was not elected. He lost that election by five points. Max Cleland won. They flipped the votes clear as day. Everybody was shocked by it. There's been numerous vote flips at this point. I do not believe George Bush won. I believe Kerry won. And I'm a member of the GOP. But I want to make it clear. We need to live in a place where your election actually is reflected in the vote. I want my candidate to win. But if my candidate loses, I care a lot more about the process than I care about the victory.